In this video we're going to look at electronic configuration and we're going to look at using the terms S, P and D subshells. So at GCSE you would have looked at the Bohr theory, the Bohr diagram. So this is a sort of simplified version of what we're going to go into today. So if you remember you would have fit in the first shell here you fit two electrons, in the second shell you fit eight electrons, the third shell 18 and so on. So the Bohr model is really great, but uh, it doesn't explain everything. So this sort of model we look at now at A-level takes it a little bit further. So you've got your principal energy levels. These are the shells. So you've got your first shell, second shell, third shell, like in the Bohr model. But these shells, or energy levels, are divided up into subshells. The first um, shell contains just one. The second shell contains two subshells. The third shell contains three subshells, and so on. So we looked at shells, um, and shells contain orbitals. So an orbital is a region in space where one is likely to find an electron. Each orbital can hold two electrons and two electrons only, and it's only as long as they have opposite spin. The different subshells have different shapes. The S subshell is a spherical shape. The P subshell has three orbitals, remember each orbital contains two electrons and is a dumbbell shape. As you can see, D, some of the d orbital shapes get even more bizarre. For AQA chemistry, you're not actually required to know these shapes, but it is of interest. Electrons fill up the shells and subshells in order, so first in shell 1, then in shell 2, but something strange happens in shell 3. Because there's an overlap, what happens is shell 3, first the 3s fills up, then the 3p fills up, but then the 4s actually fills up before the 3d subshell. So the periodic table links into this model. If you imagine the uh, hydrogen and the helium being here and here, this whole section is the s subshell. So this is the s S subshell. This section over here is the P subshell. And in yellow, it's the D subshell. That's, this is the D subshell. So you've got the S block, P block, and D block. We'll come back to how this links in more in a sec. Now, as mentioned, the first shell is divided into one subshell, and this is the S subshell. It can contain, all S subshells can contain two electrons because it contains just one orbital, but each orbital can take two electrons. You can see the next shell above contains two subshells. The first is the S, which can, can, can contain two electrons, and the second is the P subshell, which has three orbitals, so therefore can contain a total of six electrons, two electrons in each subshell. So we're now going to go through a load of different elements and look at how you fill it up. So for hydrogen, hydrogen's got one electron. So two ways of doing it. You can do the box or box way. Um, so here's the, you've got one electron, so it goes in the lowest energy level, which is the 1s subshell. You draw it as an arrow pointing up, to show it's got spin. The convention is always to draw the first one with the arrow pointing up. And the other way to do it, which you need to know, is you can write, you can write it like this, 1 S1. So this shows that we've got this electron in the 1s subshell and there's just one electron there. So helium. The next has now has two electrons, helium's two electrons, so the next that electron goes in the same shell, in the same orbital, but it's pointing downwards to show that it has opposite spin. Another way to write this is 1s subscripts, that should, again should be a little too, to show there's two electrons in that subshell. So helium, helium's got two electrons, so you can see we put that next electron here, you can see the arrow is pointing down because this can fit two electrons, and obviously it wants to go to the lowest energy level. Uh, the way to write that uh, shorthand rather than using the box method is like this, you write 1, S, and 2, the subscript above on top right, so we can see that there's two electrons in the 1s subshell. So lithium's got three electrons, so the one, um, sh the shell one is now full, 
this orbital can only fit two, so it has to go in the next lowest energy level, which is 2s. So we draw the arrow pointing up, and the way to draw that is like, so to write that so in the other method, is like this, so it's 1s2, 2s1. So beryllium would be 1s2, 2s2. Two, because we've got four electrons in total, two in this first one, two in the second subshell. So, born. This subshell, this orbital is now full, so it now goes into the 2p orbital. So this is written as 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. If you always count the, um, the little subscript numbers, that should be, if you add them all together, that should give you the same number of electrons as born has. So, born has five, so that adds up to five. So carbon's got six electrons. Now you might think that the electron might fit into this orbital here. There's a room here. But because of electron-electron repulsion, it actually goes into the next orbital. So we fill up all these orbitals with one until we start backfilling. So we can see nitrogen. Nitrogen's got seven electrons. The, way to, the right way to write it is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. So oxygen, it's got this extra electron, it can't, these are all filled with one, so it has to go in one which has already got one, but we put it with an arrow going the opposite direction. The reason electrons need to have an opposite spin is if you can think of them sort of spinning around, if they're spinning in opposite directions, it means they can get closer. Because remember, they don't really like being close to each other because they are both negatively charged. So the next few just fill up as you would expect. I'll just show you the slides. So all the way up to argon, it's all relatively simple. You just keep filling up, just making sure that um, when you get to the P subshells that they fill up one in each orbital first and then backfill. So potassium, one might expect the electron to go into the 3D subshell first, but actually the, it goes into the 4S subshell. This is because the 4S subshell is of slightly lower, at a slightly lower energy level. Calcium, again, into the 4S um, subshell before we start going into the 3D subshell. Just note that these up here, um, there has been a slight uh, formatting error. These numbers here should all be subscript. They should be little numbers. Whenever you're writing them, they should be little numbers. I'll show you why. So it should really be written like this with the little subscript numbers rather than them just to the right in, in large. So scandium fills up as you might expect. Titanium as well, and vanadium. It's chromium that does something strange. So you would expect, if you looked at the previous slide, if you went back a little bit, you'd expect it just to add an electron just here. Uh, well, it does add an electron just here, and then it promotes one of the 4s electrons into the 3d shell, because this makes for a more stable configuration. With all these orbitals being half-filled, it makes for a more stable configuration. Manganese backfills the 4s. And then iron starts to backfill the 3D, followed by cobalt. And then copper does the weird thing again. You would expect the electron just to go there. Again, it does, it does just go there. But it promotes one of the 4S electrons into the 3D subshell. Again, this is because this is a more stable configuration. Finally, zinc backfills the 4S subshell. So positive ions are formed by removing electrons, negative ions by adding electrons. Electrons are removed first from the highest occupied orbital, except for transition metals. We'll go into that in a sec. So, for example, here's sodium. Okay. So, if we formed sodium plus, we'd remove what the electron from the highest occupied orbital, which is the 3s. So, we remove the 3s1 electron. For chlorine, so chlorine is going to gain an electron. You can see it just needs one electron to have um, that sort of octet rule. So it's going to gain one electron and put that electron into the p orbital as you would expect. So uh, pause the video and have a go at these questions. I'll just leave it going for a sec. Okay, so this first question, you asked to draw it using the arrow and box method for carbon. So carbon's got six electrons, so you should have drawn it like this, with two in the 1s subshell, two in the 2s subshell, and two in the 2p subshell. 
So the next one is nitrogen with a three minus charge. So this would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, because it's gained three electrons. And finally, the chloride ion using the shorthand method, which I haven't taught you yet, so I don't know why it's out there. So when transition metals make ions, there's a bit of a difference. So despite being of a lower energy level and being filled first, electrons in the 4s orbital are removed before any electrons in the 3d orbital. Now, so an example we got, this is titanium, so that's the full electronic configuration. So you can see that it is uh, 4s2, 3d2, and the, the 4s would have filled up first. So this is removing just one electron, so this is titanium plus, that should be a sub, uh, superscript, but it's messed up the formatting. Um, so you can see the electrons being lost from the 4s subshell, not the 3d subshell. Here's the 2 plus ion, you can see that it's now lost both its electrons from the 4s subshell, it doesn't have a 4s subshell anymore. If we remove a third electron, it's now removed from the 3d as you would expect and a four, f fourth electron again from the 3D as you would expect. So hopefully in this video you've looked at and um, got a better understanding of electronic structure of ions up to um, Z equals 36, that's with proton number 36 in terms of S, P and D subshells. If you've got any questions please just leave them in the comments below.